I'm here to, I'm here to talk to you today about a, a particular situation that happened to me. It was in 2010. It was April 23rd, 2010, and it was day three of the NFL draft. Okay? Now, as a player, the draft is something that we all look forward to. We all have expectations of what, of what the draft will be like. Okay? But see, this day turned into the longest day that I've ever been through, and it took me to the lowest point that I've ever been through. You see, as the draft went on, I just remember name after name kept scrolling on the screen. Now, throughout the whole draft process, coaches, teams, everybody kept telling me how I wasn't going to get drafted. They tell me how I wasn't good enough to play. They also told me that I shouldn't even watch the draft. So as the draft went on, the first day was, of course, round one. Second day was two and three. The third day, I'm thinking I'd get picked early on in that day, fourth round. So as round four came, name after name kept scrolling, still nothing. Round five, still nothing. Round six came. By then, <laughs> uh, I was a little upset. So my dad came, so I came downstairs and my dad saw me. My dad, he pulled me into, into his room. He set me down in the chair and uh, the first thing that my dad asked me, he said, son, are you mad? I said, yeah, I'm mad. He said, I mean, I put in all this work, <laughs> played four years, performed well. You know, I didn't get any, inv any invitations to any all-star games, no combine, no nothing. But when I had my chance to perform, I outperformed these guys. I was like, once again, I'm getting overlooked. Once again, I'm second place. Once again, <laughs> I'm a leftover. So my dad asked me a second question. And I didn't really didn't know how to answer this question. He asked me, he said, uh, are you mad at God? And I was kind of, uh, yeah, but I haven't got drafted yet, so I really don't want to answer that question right now. <laughs> so, so, my dad told me to do this. Now, if anybody knows anything about the draft, your phone is the most important thing, because that's how teams get in contact with you and let you know that you got drafted. So, my dad said, this is what I want you to do. He said, give me your phone. I want you to go outside, walk around the neighborhood, and just pray about it. I wasn't that idea too much. I said, I'll go walk around the neighborhood and pray about it as long as I can hold on to my phone. So we fought back and forth for a little bit, and, and eventually I gave him the phone, and, and I went outside and I prayed about it. But before I walked outside, he told me, he said, now say what's on your mind. He said, say whatever you got to say. So when I went outside and I walked around, I said exactly what was on my mind. Good, bad, ugly, and indifferent. I think, I think y'all get the point. So I walked around the neighborhood, and eventually I got to this bench. And I sat on this bench. You know, I was mad. I was crying, I was frustrated, man. I, you know, I couldn't believe that, that all the hard work that I did was unnoticed. And I sat on the bench and I said this. I said, God, wherever you want me to be, that's where I'm gonna be. I said, I'm done. I was literally done with the situation. I didn't care if I got drafted, I didn't care where I went, I was through. About 30 seconds later, I wish I was telling a lie. About 30 seconds later, my dad comes driving up in the car. I don't know how he found me. He said, man, hurry up, get back, Carolina's on the phone. I said, Carolina's on the phone. He said, hurry up, get back to the house. I said, where's my cell phone at? He said, man, I don't know, I lost your cell phone. I'm like, how you lose my, but anyway, so, so we get back to the house and uh, my mom comes running up to me with the house phone, hands me the phone, it's the general manager for the Carolina Panthers on there. He gets on and he starts talking to me and he says, so how's your day going? I said, well, uh, you know, it's all right. You know, I haven't been drafted yet. And so we kept talking, and at the end of the conversation, he told me, he said, hey, we just want to let you know that we just drafted you. You see, throughout the entire draft process, my favorite Bible verse kept popping up in my head. It's uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. It says, therefore, do not lose heart. Though outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far away them all. We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal. See, all I could see, man, at the time was guys getting picked before me. All I could see was my own situation, me trying to take control of it. It wasn't until I submitted, it wasn't until I let go of control that God moved. So, so I just want to be an encouragement, and I'm still encouraging myself through this, is whenever you're going through something, Whenever trials hit, let go of the control. And don't focus on what you can see, because God's in the background making moves for you. There you go.